Welcome to Meet Your Mentor. I'm Jack Scott, your host and the Chief Operations Officer of the Mentor Project. For these next few minutes, I will be interviewing one of our world-class mentors. As you listen, you will gain insights into their individual lives as they share their personal journeys of their successes and failures. We will discuss some of the best and worst career advice they have ever received, and I will have them describe in their own words what it means to be a mentor. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I am your host, Jack Scott, and I am so excited about our guest today, who is not only a mentor for the Mentor Project, but she is also one of our board members, and she also runs our Fridays DIY puppetry and storytelling, and we will dive more into that a little bit later. But Marilyn Price, wow, she is a nationally known puppeteer, storyteller, and educator who has been telling and teaching for over 40 years. Over the years, Marilyn and her puppets have traveled to every corner of the United States using original scripts and stories fitted for her characters and style. Marilyn has taught and performed across the country to children, educators, librarians, parents, professional puppeteers, and storytellers and clergy. She has been the author of a of the bi-monthly feature on puppetry for Schaffer Magazine and a series of articles on Jewish home life for Reconstructionist Magazine. And in spring of 96, released a book, Puppets in English and Spanish for Celebration Press, which featured her puppet creation. One of her original tells, Grandma's Shalah, can be found in Chosen Tells, stories told by Jewish storytellers. Also released from Torah Aura Press is Marilyn Price and Friends, Present the alphabet from Aleph to Tav, featuring a different puppet creation for each letter of the Hebrew alphabet, including the vowels. I hope I did not butcher anything in there, Marilyn, but you will let me know. I am <laughs> so excited to have you on the show today. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I, I just, you know, I'm always interested in introductions. Yeah, yeah. were you taking oh, notes? And you're who like, who is that? You know, <laughs> oh, hey, I know. I should know her. We do the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, I adore you. This is so great. I'm so excited to have you on on the show. This is going to be so much fun. Um, I know I just I told the listeners a little bit about you, but I want to know from your your voice, who is Marilyn? Tell us a little bit about who you are outside of the bio, outside of your LinkedIn or your resume. Tell us who you are and a little bit more about your career. Wow. Um, I've been in this biz for over almost 50 years. I started as a, basically as a way to keep myself and my brain active after I did, when I left showbiz or biz biz, I should say. And um, it has been the, my mantra is that you need to do what feels right and what can make a difference. And this did it. Uh, It made a difference in my own creativity, but it also made a huge difference in me being able to raise my family, my my little kiddos who are no longer that. Um, And it's, I had no idea. If you'd have asked me when I was eight, I wanted to be a flight attendant, then called a stewardess, but I was too short. And, um, but I do love to fly. And this just happened. And uh, so, although it kind of, bundles up with my advice to those out there is you just have to put yourself out and above your own thoughts and thinking well who would ever want to be a puppeteer storyteller educator and uh hopefully the best at it that they could be not necessarily the best because that's not as important as the best as you can be and uh you just do it and someone asked me if I could do something I usually say oh sure Sure. I, I love that about you. You just say, yes, I'm going to figure it out. That's yeah. mm-hmm. ugh, you're awesome. You're mm-hmm. so dynamic. When I, what I want to know is what did it look like when you first got into this field? <laughs> like, what were you doing? Were you doing kids birthday parties? Like, what did that look like for you? The very first show I did was with a woman who asked me to help her out because I had no idea how to do this. And we did a party for a recently singled parents. Uh, who brought their kids and the concept was they'd meet others right so our job was to do the show 
behind a proscenium screen. A proscenium screen is you only see the puppets, you don't see the puppeteers. I think it was one of the last ones I did like that. So there we were, and the parents immediately evacuated the premises <laughs> and left us with these kids who started to throw spitballs at us. Um, so we I knew know. this was not a good idea. Uh, that was my first entry into showbiz, but like I said before, you move ahead because I knew it was going to be okay. And uh, we got on the loudspeaker and said, parents, return to your children. <laughs> and they did. Um, and then we just figured out a new approach. And we just moved on. And 10 years down the road, we separated amicably. And she went her way. And I went the way I am now, which is in front. I think that all people have a limited attention. So what it looked like to me then was I needed to be there. I mm. needed to be there if they had a question so I could answer it in the context of the story format. Um, so when I go into a tale, which a tale, a story, I'm real ready for the uh, unforeseen, like a kid hanging onto my leg or I mean, I'm there and I can see by their faces. It's taught me to listen carefully this biz I'm in and then to expand it because puppetry, the oldest art form that incorporates all others is the, gives me the ability to see the, and respond to a visual learner, a learner who needs tactile. Cause you can see, here's mm -hmm. a dude sitting right here. You know, mm -hmm. So you can see the whole story with him. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even need a voice. So I can perform for the, uh, hearing impaired, I can perform with the um, visually impaired because they can touch. Mm -hmm. I can perform for, uh, and create literacy opportunities. And then for those who are too old for puppets, I just tell them a story. Um, and then we go teach teachers. So opportunities come as long as you are ready and open for them. So you've done an amazing that's job. Looks, that's how it looks yeah. to me. I think this particular phase of our lives now is one that offers so many opportunities that will continue because to mm -hmm. be able to reach an audience and sit with them mm -hmm. in their homes mm -hmm. um, and know the, who they are by look around. You, know, you, you can mm -hmm. see what's behind me. This is my studio. Um, and I can see it at the same time, but I can see when I'm doing stuff, what people are up to. And that's real important for now. Mm -hmm. So, but I foresee this going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you are, you have such a creative way about what you do that you are growing with the times. And that's what, that's when it's going to keep what you're doing relevant in all of the aspects. Uh, when in your career field, being in it, you said 50 years, it, what has been the most, what is and still is the most rewarding thing within your career for, that wakes you up every morning to do what you're doing? Just the possibilities. I mean, the endless okay. possibilities. I, I can't imagine running out of stuff to do. I will say, in all honesty, I sometimes wonder where it comes from. I mean, how come others don't know that when you look at a coffee cup, it can be a character? Why don't people know that this is going to be something just awesome at some point? I see. <laughs> she has a, a hammer in her hands, yeah, by the way. <laughs> um, if I had a hammer. I mean, I, I love it. think that we all need to learn how to look within. And mm -hmm. then we, and I don't know where it comes from. I mean, faith-based, yes, I'm sure about that. But I think we can all do it. It just takes a little time. Mm-hmm. Well stated, Marilyn, well stated. Um, so you, uh, as I stated at the beginning, you're not only a mentor, but you're also on our, our board, our executive board here at the Mentor Project. And we are so excited. I mean, you and I, I think, came on right around the same mm -hmm. time. And I'd like to know, being a mentor here at the Mentor Project and working with the children that we work with around the world, what does it mean to you to be a mentor here? I think it's at all stages, because I can't say we just started doing this. You certainly did not. None of the others did either. Mm -hmm. I think that, again, the possibilities, the curiosity, the way we, in our time, limited time that we have, just can make such a difference. Even if you make a difference to one person, which then rolls out to mm -hmm. more people, 
it's an endless cycle of only good stuff. And even, um, this is a weird word here, an anti-mentor, mm -hmm. you say, I don't want to do that. I would do this instead is a way to make a difference. So I, being a mentor to me is the way we change the world, even if it's one step at a time. And that's not bad. I love that. So uh, being a mentor, I want to ask you a, a hypothetical question. If you were sitting here and you had one of your mentees sitting in front of you and they were, say, in high school thinking about and they were in creative arts and they were wanting to do something in that sector, but not sure of what direction they wanted to go as they were moving out of high school into college. Could you provide them some additional advice, knowing your background, that could assist them with guiding them to make that decision on the direction that they would want to go in their career? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> she says, ever positive. I think the biggest advice we give all of our mentees, and, and this would be mine coming for me, is there are endless, endless ways that you can take what you are good at and add to it. So if you don't know yet what you're good at, um, that's your first search. Mm -hmm. And then you add on to it. So it's kind of like um, when I teach drawing, you take a pencil and you make that. Or a writer. You know, we have white, white page syndrome, which means it's totally blank. You need to put something on that page. Mm -hmm. So even if it's just a little, now you've done it. You've crossed the barrier. And now you can move ahead. And the same is true about our career choices. If you think you're on the right path, I, and when I went into college, I did um, medical illustration. Clearly, that didn't happen. Um, but I was <laughs> sidetracked because the illustration part I got, the medical part, the world should be pleased that I didn't go into. <laughs> um, although it was fascinating to me and it's still a field that is very little explored. But so I took what I had then and moved it into the other phases of my creativity in my life. And again, it's about being open. Uh, if I had the opportunity, and I hope I will, to sit down with someone who says, you know, puppetry is so interesting, and it's not particularly well served at this point, um, but it could be because it could add into so many things. The very first big show uh, my then partner and I did was for Pompeii uh, at the Art Institute. And so we did a show called Pompeii, Can You Dig It?, which taught about the whole catastrophe in Italy with Mount Vesuvius using puppets. So mm. we were able to teach through puppetry. And that still goes on a variety of different ways today, which roll into all the other things that I've ever done. So you got to pay attention. Nothing is as it seems. There's something else going on, even um, non-political at all, even in the way we respond to people we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. We need to dig deeper to find out what it is that's blocking us from being um, as open as we can. And mm -hmm. that does take time. But different ways that we can get to it, sometimes we need to, you know, go around the corner and mm -hmm. take a side trip mm -hmm. down at the alley and then... I don't mean alley in the worst way. I love alleys. So, uh, I mean, to go and just move away for a minute so you can bring it all back into you. So paying attention is the hardest thing we teach and the hardest thing to learn. Yeah, you said something, and I want to uh, reiterate for the listeners, because we've had other mentors say something similar, and it, it was what you were talking about about going into a field and maybe not being sure about like your personal experience, but how you use that experience, even though you're not still in the medical field, but you took that knowledge and that experience and you started, you used it in different ways within your career. Um, that's very important because sometimes you might be getting into a career field that you might not enjoy, but you could use those skills and that, that skill set that you're learning right then at another point, it could be five or 10 years down the road. You don't know. Um, and you know, you're, you're very much a mentor within your field and what you do and the engagements that you have within your community and with children. Uh, I'd like to know if you could summarize in one word, what a mentor means to you, what would that word be to you, Marilyn and why that particular word? Provocative. Provocative. Why? 
I think in order to respond to someone who's helping you, you need to question back. You need to make sure that you are proactive, which is another piece of that provocative word. Um, Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, I've been thinking about that since I saw the question somebody wonderful sent me. And, and And a whole lot of different words came, but you need to provoke people. You need to make them ask you the questions back because sometimes it's not the question as much as it is the answer. Uh, Not like a Jeopardy thing, but although maybe it is like a Jeopardy thing. Uh, If someone can ask me a question that makes me be provocative, to be proactive, then that makes me a good mentor as well as a good mentee. So Mm. I think it goes both ways. Uh, And it's also like a match game, right? Mm -hmm. You know, who do I want to mentor i mean i'd mentor anybody but but sometimes we may not fit mm-hmm. so we need to get the right fit mm-hmm. yeah i couldn't agree with you more on that one uh don't ever lose sight if you are working with somebody and there's not a fit find another mentor there's mm-hmm. other people out there right. um and i also like what you said it's a it's a mini it's a two-way street between the mentor and mentee you're going to learn from the mentee sometimes just as much as you're, as the mentee is going to learn from you. Um, through your career uh, in, in, you know, you've had a business partner and you've really branched out on your own. But during that time, I know that you had to have had some bad advice given to you. Can you remember a time that you received just, you know, not so good advice? And then what did you do about it? Um, I have received a lot of bad advice. Um, I don't follow through on it, but I have been, I was, I'm often told that I'm not going to succeed at certain things that I want to do. They're always wrong. Um, And sometimes that's good advice because I'm so stubborn that I'd say, maybe I have to go around it and figure out a way to do it. Um, uh, The other one piece of bad, no, see, every time I've been given bad advice, I just smile. And try again to figure out what, what, why are they doing that? Do Mm -hmm. they want to do this themselves? Good question. Do they think you're not capable? This is not Mm -hmm. unusual for a woman in any business Mm -hmm. that we're, and especially in my generation. Um, When I started out in puppetry, most everyone was male. Uh, My business partner then for 10 years was, obviously Susan was not a male. Um, But, and we were told a lot of times along the way, this wasn't a business for girls. Uh, we didn't pay attention to that. And now, of course, there is nothing we cannot do. So bad advice. Yeah, I was also told once I couldn't be appointed to an arts council by mm. he who became my very best friend um, because they only wanted business people. Mm. So uh, in questioning that, we discovered that if I – you know, put down all the business things I'd ever done, what do you know? The mayor would go, hmm, well, maybe I'm wrong. And so I was on that arts council for seven years and chaired it. Uh, So it it isn't that people want to give you bad advice. They just sometimes end up doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with you absolutely on that. So I want to ask you the opposite of that question, Marilyn. What is the best advice you have received and how did that impact you within your within your career? I think the best advice I have ever received was from the same gentleman who became my mentor, um, Joe, my friend Joe, who told me that I could do, there was nothing I couldn't do as long as I was prepared to do it, I love that. which meant doing something I really don't like to do. And think of him. He died in the AIDS epidemic in 95. He always told me I had to rehearse. I don't like. Mm -hmm. But you can't ad lib unless you're well rehearsed. And I'm a Mm -hmm. queen of ad libbing because I'm well rehearsed. So, um, and I like to use mistakes. So that was the best advice. And I took it from him because he knew. Um, So that, you know, and whenever I think about it, I think of him. So that makes sense. Where's Jerry's board? I love that. I, yes, I still rehearse when I give certain briefs and things like that. It's, it's my stage. You're, you know, you have your stage. I think everybody has a stage in their life and whatever they do. For sure. For sure. 
So we're coming to the end of our time, but before we do, I've got to ask you one of my most favorite questions because uh, I love the diversity of the answers. But what is your? Do you have a favorite quote? What is a favorite quote that that you've maybe lived by, or something that you have used as of recently? Uh, I use this all the time. I have several, but this one has become even greater, especially now. It's uh, a piece of a poem by a Israeli poet named Yehuda Amachai, and this is what this is what it says: Don't clear the glasses and plates from the table. Don't rub the stain from the cloth. It's good to know people were here before me. Um, mm. So mm. that feeds into every single person that has ever affected you. And I use it uh, not as an excuse to not wash the dishes, <laughs> but as we got to know we mentors and everyone out there, mentees, that somebody is responsible for the way we are. And if we can remember that, it does a great deal of good for our ego trips mm -hmm. because it's is not about me. Mm -mm. This is about who made me who I am. I keep going in and out of like blurriness. I'm like, Marilyn. So Marilyn, we are at the end of our time. I want to know what is the best way for these listeners to be able to reach you? Is it email? Do you have a website that you, you could share with us? I have a website. It is currently under, um, I'd like to say debate, but it's still functioning. <laughs> at the end of it is my email, one email. I have another one that I'm happy to have people use. I'd like you to say on the subject that you have a question about um, mentoring or about what I do. Happy to do that. My website is just my name.com, MarilynPrice.com. Um, I also run a foundation that people can reach me from there. Try braining, funny little word, Inc. And uh, if you go on Facebook or website where you can find T R I B R A I N I N G dot com. And that's to help people learn in a variety of different ways. So we are always looking to do things and help people and be the best we can be in the best possible way. Like you. I love that. And, and I also want to add, please check out uh, mentorproject.org and check out Marilyn. She's got on Friday, she does a DIY puppetry and storytelling from 10 to 10.30 p.m. EST. So you don't want to miss that. Marilyn, You, this has been so much fun. I love connecting with you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> May Take the force be with you. Yeah. Is that what that's how I hold my yeah. puppets and that's why they work. Thank <laughs> You're you. You're awesome. See you soon. Thank you to all our listeners and sponsors who have made this podcast possible. You can check out all our content by going to our website at mentorproject.org. We'd love for you to contact us to get more involved. See you next week when we talk with another one of our amazing mentors.